Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker Betting Show. A fabulous weekend of sport coming up, of course. We've got uh, the Premier League, the final set of fixtures before the World Cup gets underway. England are into the 2020 World Cup final, but most importantly, in the horse racing world, we've got three fantastic days of action to enjoy as part of the November meeting. My name's Danny Archer. I'm going to be your host today. George is having a well-earned break, probably getting himself prepped for Qatar. But one man who is with me is Andy Holding. Andy, how are you? Looking forward to a, a good weekend of action? Yeah, I'm... I'm always um, always a big advocate of this meeting. Uh, I've been going to it now for oh, as long as I can remember, to be honest, Danny. Um, we're talking sort of thirty odd years, I'd imagine. Um, I can't remember me missing a meeting really. I, I always go at least on the Thursday, uh, sorry, on the Friday and Saturday. Of late, I've missed the Sunday because uh, of family commitments. But um, yeah, it's right up there with the Cheltenham Festival for me, with a with a must attend kind of like stamp on it. So. It's just a lovely meeting to go to. You just get a little bit of everything, uh, very competitive action, and you know you can't beat Cheltenham's on the Cheltenham um, race course on a, on a on a big weekend. And I'm sure there'll be a good uh, crowd because look, the weather looks like uh, being set fair. The ground seems to be absolutely ideal. They've had a bit of rain. It's good to soft, so it shouldn't really put any trainers off with regard to risking their horses. And you know we're not going to get bundles of rain like we did the, this time last year as well for the weekend. So it's, it it couldn't be set up any better, to be honest, Dan. And Andy, this is a cracking weekend, but this whole build up to Christmas, obviously the Betfair chase is on the horizon. We've already had the Charlie Hall. Then, of course, you get to the King George, etc. Away from the Cheltenham Festival, this this time before Christmas is a really interesting time to look at all sorts of different unexposed chases and all sorts of different horses who are trying to make their mark. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we there's always an end game and everyone talks about, you know, the festival. Um, oh, yeah, this ran well. This is a triumph for loss. This is a, could be a novice... Supreme novice horse, Arbor oh, Barley, blah, blah, blah. And I just think that's the sub narrative, that's the narrative that goes on in the background, isn't it? But I think if you just concentrate on each individual meeting as an entity on its own, they all provide their own special qualities, don't they? You know, as you say, we've got three day newbie meeting coming up soon with a big handicap to conclude and lots of other different clues along the way. And it's all a, that's a great thing about national season, all a gradual um the puzzles that the picture the pieces of the puzzle get. Um, played out in front of our very eyes week in, week out. So plenty to look forward to. Literally every weekend there's going to be something um, good going on. Uh, and I think this is genuinely the first real big two or three day meeting we get our teeth stuck into. Before we do get our teeth stuck into it, we'll get Andy's selections. Just run you through uh, the Racing Weekly show, of course, was back with Rishi and Sam. They had Paul Ferguson, one of the shrewdies around who loves the National Hunt game. He was on the Racing Weekly this week. So do check that out on our YouTube channel. Of course, also do check out the Odds Checker app for all the best bets and tips and much more. All the best offers around. And do also check out the YouTube channel this weekend because the World Cup, just 12 days to go now until the first game of the World Cup in Qatar. And uh, Odds Checker will have content going out across the weekend. So keep all across the World Cup, Cheltenham and much more uh, via Odds Checker on the app and on the YouTube channel. So we get underway on Friday with a competitive card, uh, six races. The 145 is the first one that we are going to tackle. I think just a quick look ahead of this. This is the mucking brilliant. Be careful how you say that one. Paddy Power Handicap Chase, two mile event, £50,000 prize fund. At the moment, the Glancing Queen uh, is a seven to two favourite I've got here. Uh, that's a big prize with Labrooks. Same price for Amarillo Sky. Uh, Grey Diamond at 9-2, to two, Malistic at 8, Fugitive 10s and Bigger the Remainder. Andy, the 145, do you think Alan King's charge could be tough to beat or are you looking elsewhere? Well, on several lines of forms, uh, strands, that she, she would be the obvious one you'd look at here. Um, she was just a little bit disappointing in the plate, wasn't she, at the festival and she was well backed. I think she went off 4-1 to one that day. Uh, but either side of that, she's a, a very good horse in her own right, usually against her own sex. Um, you know, those mare, mare's races tend to be dominated by the class horses, and she's uh, obviously one of what one of those uh, kind of animals with, that you'd sort of associate with a, with a touch of quality about her. Um, she's she's best in small fields as well. I checked her record, and that's probably one of the reasons why she was a bit disappointed in the plate, didn't get into the normal rhythm rhythm that she can do in a smaller field. So nine runners is absolutely ideal for her. One would imagine that Alan King and Connections have had this race on their mind for a little while. Looks the obvious starting point. Um, and she's got plenty of pace for two miles, as we know. So she's probably the right favourite. The 
issue with the rest of the field, really, uh, Daddy, more than anything else, is that none of them have got any real obvious Cheltenham form. And that's usually the starting point, isn't it, when we're looking at these kind of races? The likes of God de Bois, for instance, likes uh, Kelso. I think he's gone back to back there so far this season. And then a lot of horses that, you know, right, we've got here have, have come from sort of like nor northern backgrounds as well. Which, so they've, they've yet to venture down to a track like this. Uh, one of them is Fugitive. And it, I think this horse is quite an interesting horse. I'll probably put this horse up at a price. Trained by Richard Hobson, who had a pretty wretched time of things last year, from, if you remember, but he had a bug through his yard. And it meant that one or two of his horses didn't run perhaps up to scratch, including this fellow, who was obviously thought highly enough to run in the grade one at Sandown, in which he finished fourth or far behind Long Press, such as the esteem they hold him in. His last two runs didn't really amount to much in the competitive handicaps, but I think he could be quite well treated off a mark of 131. We know that the yard's in good form. Uh, the course riders on the storm, I think it was, wasn't it, who won uh, the old round chase for 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 this yard um, a month ago. Uh, and I think that could be, I think, like I said, with a yard like that, that can be underestimated. Uh, so I think him around about, what, what are we looking at, 11, 12 to 1, something like that? Yeah, 11 to 1 across the board, yeah. 11 to 1 across the board. Yeah, that, that probably isn't a bad show in a race where, barring the favour, like I say, a lot of, there's a lot of unknown quantities because they've yet to run the track. Okay, fugitive then at eleven to one in that one forty-five for Andy. Move on to the two twenty. This is an interesting enough event. I think the SSS Super Alloys Novices Limited Handicap Chase, uh, competitive again on the betting front. It's tight at the top of the betting between both Pulligan Green and Hereditary Rule. They're both the seven to two joint fabs. Unanswered prayers also at seven to two. So seven to two co favorites are free. Railway Hurricane at six is along the Super Six. Stimulating Song at elevens and it's bigger the remainder. I thought this was quite a tricky race to get a handle on, Andy. Put again, Green made a couple of bad mistakes on the chasing debut last time out, and Hereditary Rule has done it nicely, mixing hurdles and chases of late in Ireland. Yeah, um, Pull again, Green at least has had a spinner on the track, which has got a count for plenty. Um, fortunately, he couldn't live with uh, Found On, who got into a great rhythm that day. And it's hard to um, compete with a horse who obviously jumped as well as she did on the day. But look, you know, he's had a run under his belt. And a run under his bow around the track, which you, you can't underestimate. But um, I quite like a horse in this race that I put up the other day in Newbury. Unfortunately, he didn't run, but he was a bit of a punt on the day until I think they pulled him out literally about 10 minutes, quarter of an hour before the off. They were sort of like checking out the ground as the day went on. But in the end, they decided that the ground was a little bit too quick for unanswered prayers, who ran a really eye catching race in the Silver Trophy at Chepstow on his at seasonal reappearance. That, of course, was a very competitive handicap hurdle, but that race has been a, a really good one to follow. It was a good time figure, um, but you look at the race subsequently, Napazil has gone on to win an elite hurdle. Lord Baddersley, Baddersley was second, bolted up next time out at Plumpton. Masters Legacy, the sixth horse, won a competitive Exeter handicap chase last week, and Prashima won a grade three at um, Weatherby subsequently. So, doesn't take a genius to work out that that form is about as raw to time as red hot as you're likely to see uh, between now and Christmas. And um, he makes his eagle, eagerly rated um, chasing debut. Uh, they obviously were happy enough to let him take his chance at, around a stiff track at Newbury. So the fact that they're coming here really doesn't make that much odds, really, to be honest. You know, they're both real good examinations of a young novice first time out. So they're obviously very pleased with his, with his schooling at home. Obviously, he's got to go and prove it on the track, but I think he's probably the most talented horse in the field, and certainly based on his hurdle form, he definitely comes here with the best singular piece of form next to his name. So if he jumps a clear round, then I think he'd be very difficult to beat on answered prayers. Yeah, could not agree more. 72 standout price, but general 11 to 4 favourites of the likes of Bet Victor and Unibet, 100 to 30, Paddy Power, another standout price. Unanswered prayers then for the Chris Gordon team in that 220. 255 is the Veterans Chase. That's another competitive enough event, but we'll move on that onto that to the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, the 330, the grade two. Interesting runner here is, of course, Willie Mullins' is Who Briscoe, who is 5 to 2 with Betfair, 7 to 2 for Hermes Allen, and we've all been caught. Music driver at fours. Seven to one collector's item and bigger the other two runners, the set tech go to post. Uh firstly, Woody Mullins runner at the November meeting. I think he might also run one in the Great Wood, but not at meeting he always targets Andy. What did you make of who Briscoe? No, he, he's tending to run his sort of like second or even third tier horses at this meeting. None of his real big guns have yet to um flex their muscles so far in Ireland. You usually find it sort of mid-November onwards, around about sort of like the Fairy House meeting, the Royal Bond and 
more gear on a hurdle. That's when he, he starts to bring out his better horses. So he's, if you like, he's running horses that are here that have got form in sort of the summer jumping category. That kind of tells you all you need to know about the likes of a Briscoe and Dad's Lad, for instance, who runs uh, in in uh, one of the races over the weekend as well. So he's very much maybe on, on the second or even stroke third tier of Briscoe. He got re- re- brushed aside by his stab companion at uh, Tipperary last time out in the grade three. He wasn't up to that standard. I think that champ Keeley who beat him is a very good horse. He might be a festival horse in the future. But um, I'd probably want to take him on here in, in, in the shape of uh, Quid Pro Crow, who I do think is a massive prize here. He was very, very well back to win um, at the Persian War uh, the last time we saw him. Um, for one reason or another, I just don't think he ran up to his best form. But I do think that was quite a good race uh, this year. Um, the second horse, uh, Outlaw Pete, Peter, uh, he went to Exeter last week and absolutely made mincemeat of his opposition. So, like I say, it's only a small sample size, but I do think that race at Chepstow was quite a good one. The time figure certainly suggested it was. So it probably wasn't as bad a performance as the defeat suggested. Um, so I reckon that he could be the one that's the most underestimated in this race. And I do think Dan Skelton's horses are now in the kind of form that we expect that yard to be. He had two winners from three runners at Bangor yesterday. So at the prices, I'm looking at 10 to 1 on my uh, page here. It might be bigger or, or, or smaller elsewhere, but um, I do think that is um, a little bit of value there. OK, 10 to 1 were Hills, Bet365, Betfair, Bet Victor, Coral and more. So a big price, quid pro quo there for Andy in the 3.30. I did mention the veterans and also the last race is the four o'clock on the card, the novices handicap hurdle. Anything that catches your eye on either of those two races, Andy? Yeah, I've I've had just one sort of anti-post bet um, already uh, for this three-day festival. Uh, And probably my best bet of the entire three days runs in the final race because I do think he's incredibly well handicapped. A horse called Master Dancer, uh, trained by uh, Richard Bandy, who's had a a very good start to the season. I, I, I'd probably say Saint Palais yesterday, uh, in getting beaten odds on in the novice hurdle, has been one or two of the one of probably only a few blips uh, from the um, Tadley hand, Handler. I, I, I pretty much most of his horses have run up to a very good standard, and this lad uh, was really impressive when he won at Stratford um, a month ago. Um, he ran in a novices uh, hand uh, novices hurdle in which Paramount was sent off a very short price favourite, a horse who's got a very high regard from the uh, Charlie Longson stable. They went a really good gallop. Paramount served it up from the front, taking them along at a proper pace. And um, Master Dancer was only one of three, two horses that could go with the favourite. Not only that, he outstayed uh, Paramount in the latter stages. Paramount got beat seven lengths. And the time figure was a very, very good, uh, like I say, for the grade. He went into that race off a mark of 112. He's come out of it with a mark of 118. But given what Paramount did the other other day to his opposition at Hereford, I think he's at least a 120 horse, uh, Paramount. So Master Dance, I think, is incredibly well handicapped here. I'll be surprised if he's not a 125-plus horse. So I certainly think he's got a bit in hand over this field. Now, whether there's something else lurking in amongst the midst that is also very well handicapped, and there is the potential, of course, in these races, in novice races, that there's likely to be at least another one or two that have got um, something up their sleeve. But I'll be surprised if there's like three or four amongst them that are better well handicapped than um, Master Dancer. So therefore, if you can get an each way price about him, sort of looking around the 11 to 2, 6 to 1 mark at time of recording, I don't think you'll be far away. So he's probably my strongest, one of my strongest views in the entire three days. OK, that's Master Dancer then, who is available at 11 to 2 with William Hill, Coral and Labrook. Standout price there. Master Dancer is in the 4 o'clock on Friday. Cracking card on Saturday gets underway at 12.35 and runs through to 4.05. We're recording this at just after one o'clock on Friday afternoon. Still waiting for prices for the opener. I think there's a couple that have come out of that race. So uh, at the moment for this JCB trial juvenile hurdle, some of the more interesting names in it include Scriptwriter, formerly trained by Aidan O'Brien, Mediaf, who's unbeaten for Dan and Harry Skelton, and Alan King runs Tuddenham Green. Anything that stands out in the 12.35, Andy? Yeah, probably one of one of my favourite categories of the entire year um, in, for betting in is juvenile hurdles. I absolutely love them. Um, all going back to the day when I used to own a horse I actually running the Triumph Hurdle and finished an agonising fifth just out to the money. Uh, and I've always had a soft spot for the three-year-olds, um, basically because of the time figures that we keep. 
tend to sort of be very accurate when it comes to assessing these kind of horses. There's sort of like a line in the sand of uh, how fast the good ones can run and then the rest of them are kind of like pushed to one side. So as the season progresses going up towards the triumph, I'm very much keeping a, a BDI on this uh, particular category. As it stands at the moment, none of these horses uh, that have had a run so far in that um, grade two have run to the kind of level that you would be expected of sort of a half decent juvenile stroke uh, triumph hurdle candidate. So mm -hmm. they've got to improve the ones who have already run um, to be kind of talked upon as genuine grade one horses. I think the best one we've seen so far, anyway, the best one I've seen, anyway, is War Correspondent, um, a, a horse trained by Ray Cody over in Ireland. He beat a decent field uh, in quite a good figure uh, at Punchestown. Not a top class figure, but a good one. And he did it as well without, um, b b by expending quite a bit of energy. It, he was quite keen throughout that race. So the fact that he managed to stay on as strongly as he did suggests that he's got to be above average. And the form of that race has already begun to work out well. The seventh horse, Common Practice, trained by Joseph O'Brien, went to, I think it was Galway the other day, uh, and he, he won by three and a half lengths. So, Collaterally, that form's already taken a bit of a boost. Uh, obviously, all Irish Raiders in these kind of events have got to be uh, very much respected. So I think he's probably the main one to concentrate on um, from the ones who had a run. But the standout horse for this race for me, without a shadow of a doubt, and I think he could be different class to these, if he jumps, and that's Perseus Way, trained by Gary Moore. As we know, Gary Moore's probably one of the best exponents of his art um, with juveniles that we've seen in the last 10 years. Uh, from a UK perspective, he always seems to have at least one or two good three-year-olds that um, either, you know, win graded races or work their way to sort of like Triumph Hurdle standard. Baron Elko, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, Goshen, of course, who would have won the Triumph by a mile had he not fallen at the last. So he's, he's a man who very much knows what he's doing with these kind of horses. I think he's inherited quite a good horse off the flat. He used to be with Owen Burroughs. Last time we saw him, he absolutely bolted up in a Newbury handicap, winning a very fast time. The form has worked out really well. And apparently schooling has gone really well subsequently. So I'm really, really looking forward to him. He's probably one of the, the one I'm with the most anticipation um, surrounding him uh, over the weekend. So hopefully he'll be a nice prize come Saturday. Um, but either way, I think Persius Way is definitely one to keep on side. OK, 12.35 Persis Worth, of course, runs in the colours of Porticello, who more had grade one success yeah. with last year as a juvenile as well. 145, one race we do have betting for, and this is an absolute corker of a contest. The Arkle Challenge Trophy Trial event, really, really competitive. Two to one, Mon Morale, three to one, Tommy's Oscar, 130, Bambridge, Penland Hills at five to one, Glory and Fortune at tens, Soul Pretender 16s, and Fusains at 100s, Betway with the prices here. Really fascinating event this, Andy, with the likes of Mon grade one winner, Tommy's Oscar, Bambridge, a Cheltenham Festival winner, and Pentland Hills, of course, won that fast school walkover last time. Yeah, a real good collection of horses, you say, Dan. Um, probably one of the races of, on the card. Very competitive, hence the, the best we saw. You know, sort of nine, nine or four, two to one, nine or four or five to two of the field. And Mon is probably the most interesting runner, isn't he? Uh, having finished the season with a, Creditable second um, behind that uh, good mayor of um, Nicky Henderson's at uh, Aintree, staying on uh, nicely from the back of the field. I suppose the only question mark with him, arguably, is will he have enough speed to win round two, um, over two miles mm. on, uh, on his seasonal reappearance? Now, obviously, Paul Nichols thinks he could be an Arkle horse, hence the fact that he's coming in here to have a to test the water over the course and distance that the Arkles run over. You've got to trust the great man to be spot on in his, uh, in his uh, theory. Um, and he's probably the one to beat if he jumps a clear round. But I do like the top one, Bambridge. At least we know with him, he's had the experience of uh, running over fencing. Similar to Monreal, he's coming back in trip, having won his beginner chase over two and a half miles at Gowan. I thought his jumping that day was exemplary for a horse having his, um, uh, his chasing bow. Never put a foot wrong, won in a good time figure as well. It wasn't as if they crawled around that day to Gowan. And I did notice that doing his circuit comparisons for the easy game, he was only half a second behind a genuine 160 rated horse over the same C and D. So, you know, he's, he's, he's already put a good marker down, Bambridge. Uh, so with his experience of not only jumping fences, but of course of Cheltenham as well, don't forget he won the boys race at the festival last season. He'd probably be the one I'd be with in that uh, very, very competitive grade two. 
Okay, Banbridge at 7 to 2. That's a really interesting race at 145. Could for up plenty of clues for the future. Feature race of the whole meeting comes up at 220. That's the Paddy Power Gold Cup, £160,000 prize fund. And as you can imagine, the odds competitive as always. 9 to 2, French Dynamite, a general favourite. That price with Betway. Uh, Garlora at 11 to 2. Stolen Silver at sixes. Il Rodota at 15 to 2. Galahad Quest at nines. Midnight River uh, 11 to 1. Happy Go Lucky. Umbregado and Nasalam all 12 to 1. Uh, 14 to 1 bar. French Dynamite's been the plunge horse of the race, uh, Andy, but are you with the favourite or are you looking elsewhere? I'm probably looking to get against him, uh, Danny. I'm going to test your knowledge here. Um, okay. I'll, I'll name I'll name the last sort of twelve winners, uh, the 10, 10 winners, and then see if you can find a a theme running amongst them. Midnight Shadow, Cool Cody, Happy Diva, Baron Elko, Splash of Gins, Tarquenda Soy, Anna Cotty, Kay de Burle, uh, John Spirit, and Alpha Roth. What do they all have in common? They'd all won at Cheltenham previously. You're not a million miles away. They've all they'd all previously either won or shown good quality form at Cheltenham in the past. So. You look at the front two in the market here, French Dynamite and Galore, that's the one thing that they lack on their CV. Now, I'm not saying they can't be good enough because I think they're both very smart horses. I think French Dynamite could run really well in a grade three, for instance, over in, in, in Ireland. We know Galore ran really well in a quality, quality renewal of the Owl Rowan behind Fiddler's uh, f- f- um, uh, fine, um, Riders on the Storm at Aintree last time out. And arguably, he was a bit unlucky not to win, so he made a bad mistake five out but the fact that they are probably better in small fields and and um they haven't got Cheltenham form at their respective prices four to one stroke six to one I'd probably just sidestep them even though it wouldn't surprise me if any of them won just because I want to be on horses at Brim Ranch Channel I think that's one of the golden rules that you should stick to when you're punting in, in these kind of big handicaps okay uh who are you going to be with then Andy I've got a short list of three, um, but my main one would be Stolen Silver, um, just because he falls into the category that I like. A horse that loves Cheltenham. Um, he won on his final start here last year, winning over two and a half miles. I actually think this horse got better as they stepped him up in trip. He ran really well beyond Cool Cody, um, for instance, didn't he, when when they stepped him up for the, for, for the first time. Um, he goes well fresh. If you have a look at his performance first time out last year, he was he was very good. Uh, and he comes from a stable in good form as well. I think Sam Thomas is ordering horses in great order. Three winners from his last eight runners. And I think he's probably been safe for this spe- uh, specifically. So he ticks a lot of the boxes I'm looking for when I'm looking for a bet in this race. And the other two would be um, Cool Cody, of course, who I think was a bit unlucky in this race last year. He was still in front and going well when he tipped up at the second last. I backed mm-hmm. him that day and I was really annoyed that he ended up on the floor. He certainly would have been in the frame. He's had a run under his belt, which he often does in a hurdle race, just to get his eye in. So even though he's a rising, a rising 12 now, I still think uh, there's plenty of juice left in him. And the other one would be Gallagher, Galahad Quest, who ran respectively in this race last year. He finished fifth um, behind uh, Midnight, um, Midnight Shadow. But that was a perfectly good return on a horse who had got limited experience in races of that nature. And of course, he's already had a spin as well this season when he finished second to Flicker de Voyo at Chepstow. So that would be my three. Um, but of the main, of those three I've mentioned, the main one would be Stolen Silver. OK, Stolen Silver for Sam Thomas, six to one general price. Galahad Quest for Jane Williams, uh, nine to one. And Cool Cody, of course, who won the race uh, back in 2020 for Evan Williams and is 12 to one there. Good, good renewal of the Paddy Power at 220. Uh, 255 looks competitive. We're going to move over and go on to the 330, which is the intermediate handicap hurdle. Another competitive contest, though. Wise Guy, 130 for De Boinville and Henderson, your current favourite. El Perfecta, an Irish Raider at 11 to 2. 6 to 1 time flies by Mahone's Glory at 7 to 1. 15 to 2 Guernsey, unanswered as well, is also there at 7 to 1 with Betfair. Andy? I think this is a fascinating affair, Dan. I think there's lots of potential well handicapped horses in this race uh picking which one of them will come out on top i think is going to be the the the, the key uh or the, or the sort of like the big puzzle i think wise guys very well handicapped i think 119 definitely underestimates him um he got beat by um a, a good horse at fun well two starts ago and then he won very easy at doncaster before he picked up a bit of an injury and it forced him to be off for the rest of the season but uh 
it could be a blessing in disguise because it it probably has meant that this um, Son of Fame and Glory strengthened up over the interim period. Uh, as I said, I think 119 is way short of his best. I do like the top one as well, Nickelback. I don't know if you mentioned him in the betting, but goodness me, that horse absolutely bolted up when he won at Fontwell on his last uh, start. But again, I think injury, inter, injuries intervene there because he's been off the track for the thick end of a year. Um, and we've got two good Irish riders as well. Al Perfecto, you mentioned uh, with, with with her. She she won a very uh, competitive handicap at the List Old Festival. And um, I've got a lot of time for that yard. They won with a horse called Impervious the other day in a beginner's chase. So they've got plenty of strength in depth. The sneaky one is definitely Tony Martin's horse down the bottom. I think Tony Martin always has had um, a reputation for being a bit of a thorn in the bookmaker's side here at this meeting. I think he's landed one or two touches here uh, in the past. And unanswered, I think he's quite well treated off a mark of 111. Um, on his last start over hurdles, he won very easily. It punches down. And he's subsequently gone on a bit of a roll on the flat, uh, including when running quite eye catching the other day and ground would have been a little bit softer than he would have liked at the Curra. So, like I say, it's a very, very trappy race, this. I would probably play it two ways because I think you'd have to have an Irish horse on your side here. So, I think unanswered would probably be the pick of, of that bunch at the prices. But I think Wise Guy off a mark of 119, I'd be surprised if he doesn't leave that well behind him. Um, either on Saturday or throughout the rest of the season. OK, Wise Guy 130 with Paddy Parham. Bet fair and unanswered for Tony Martin at 7-1. to one. So two picks there in the 330, the intermediate handicap hurdle. Final race of the day. Quite a fascinating bumper, this. A listed contest at 4.05. Uh, no betting for this at the minute at the time of recording. But you've got the likes of Bonte, who's a course and distance winner. Lucia, excuse me, Lucia, who's also unbeaten for Nicky Henderson. And a couple of other interesting runners with the likes of Fortuitous Favour and Kiss My Lucky Ed for Grand National Winner trainer Emmett Mullins. Andy? Yeah, I quite like Queen's Gamble here, um, Danny. Um, very rare for Oliver Sherwood to have a bumper winner full stop, let alone a bumper winner first time out at Cheltenham. But she absolutely demolished a very good feel when she uh, won on her debut here uh, at the April meeting. She always travelled well, travelled like the best. She was noted going best turning for home and then she scampered away from two horses who've subsequently won over hurdles so far this season. So I think the form's quite good. Mullenberg and what's called Sed Wren. Um, whether she's, you know, up against several horses or perhaps a notch or two higher than I, I don't really know the answer to that. But um, she couldn't have done any more than win by the margin she did and the manner that she did. Uh, so, yeah, you'd be surprised, let's say, if there's four or five better than her come the weekend. So I'd be interested to see what price bookmakers go about Queen's Gamble. She, she's definitely one um, I've got on my mind for that race. Definitely remember after the race last year, Oliver Sherwood being effusive in his praise of Queen's Gamble. Definitely want to know. And just another one right down the bottom, Bryony Frost rides a Williamstown Dancer for Willie Mullins. So an interesting enough race, that 4.05 concluding race on Saturday. Really good card at HQ. Sunday, final uh, day of the November meeting. Of course, we don't have the final decks yet. Of course, we're recording on Thursday. Uh, the Schler Chase, £100,000 event. Editor Deji is in this at the minute, but do be reminded that he runs in the Paddy Power. So it looks like it could be a tight toss at the top between Edward Stone and Nube Negra. Edward Stone currently a one to two favourite. Nube Negra, the defending champ at six to four. Are you with the Arkel Chase winner or the defending champ here, Andy? I'd probably have to be with Edward Stone. Um... He's only blip on his dance card when he got beat by a gentleman to me, but that was off the back of a long, hard season, wasn't it? You know, he'd had four or five grade one wins, was it, in between then? Or certainly um, most of them were sort of like high-class races, grade twos at the very least. He Culminating, of course, in his Arco victory when he beat a, a stellar field. Um, so you'd, you'd certainly give him a pass, wouldn't you, for, for getting beat on his on his last start. It wasn't a bad run. He just, the gentleman to me, was just too quick for him around that sharp trap, but... We know he loves Cheltenham. Um, this looks the obvious starting point, doesn't it? Um, before, before perhaps going towards the Tingle Creek. I think because he's won at Sandown, connections have quite rightly earmarked that race as their number one target for the early part of the season. And all roads will hopefully then lead to the champion chase. Touch wood if everything goes smoothly. But this should be not necessarily a relatively straightforward exercise for him because he has got Nubi Negu in there to beat, as you say. He's a very good horse around Cheltenham in his own right and goes well fresh. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, by and large, you'd say Edward Stone's got a slightly better body of work um, and could be improving. 
uh, where because Nubi Negra has been around and established and on the block for a couple of years. Still think you'd, you'd like to think that Edward Stone could, Edward Stone could take his game to another level. Um, so I'd imagine he'd be odds on to win this, Edward Stone. So I'm not giving anything um, a shout at a, at a big price here. But um, yeah, if 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 I've got to come up with a selection, he would be the one. Okay, Edward Stone for Alan King and Tom Cannon to continue his classy record at Chun. But Nube Negra, another fascinating runner, as Andy says, given he goes well fresh. 255 is the £100,000 Great Wood Hurdle. This is another one of the biggest races of the weekend, a huge betting race. Your four to one favourite at the moment, reminder, we don't have final decks. These prices are likely to change a little bit. The favourite is Fowls and Tears at four to one for Emmett Mullins. Sonagino for Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols is also quietly fancied, along with course and distance scorer. I like to move it. Dad's Lad for Willie Mullins and other towards the top of the betting. And you've also got the likes of Teddy Blue, Harbour Lake, Nina the Terrier and plenty, plenty more. Andy, at this stage? Well, I'd like any form judge out there who's listening to this to um, tell me how Thousand, Thousand Tears is a four to one shot. Show me the form where <laughs> Thousand Tears is a four to one shot. Um, I think, look, this has just been priced up on Emmett Mullins, isn't it? I mean, obviously the shunt of two years ago, Bookmakers are taking absolutely no chances. The Shunters was one of the gambles of the three days when he won this race, um, as I said, a couple of years, for the same connections. Um, Paul Byrne used to own the Shunter prior to uh, being uh, picked up by um, JP McManus. Uh, I think that was a shrewd bit of business, given the way that the Shunter's gone since. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she, look, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a nice enough horse, and I've seen him run a few times over in Ireland, but four to one to win a great wood hurdle, I'd say, you you're taking a right chance there if um, if if you because say you think he's well handicapped off a mark of 129. Um, I think when you look at a race like this, you think, well, is there anything in here in particular that might have a huge amount up his sleeve? And th- there's probably maybe two or three horses that fall into that category. The likes of I like to move it West Core, Cormier, Nigolo, they're pretty much. You know, in in the grip, if if not in the grip of the handicapper, but kind of like they're they're set on their marks. So I don't think there's going to be any improvement to come from them. I think the three to look at here are Teddy Blue, uh, Soninga, Soninga, Soningo, mm-hmm. and and Jin Coco. And I think Jin Coco out of those three, I think has got the potential to perhaps be the most favourably treated off 131. Uh, I thought he ran a really big race when he went to Punchestown um, last season. Uh, Harry Fry often takes one or two runners over to the County Kildare track, and he almost come away landing one of their big handicap prizes. He just got run out of it late on by Broomfield Hall, but they pulled well clear of the rest. And then he had a little bit of a spin the other day at Newton Abbott just to blow away the cobwebs. He couldn't have won any more easy. He comes out of that race still rated 131. Um, and I do like his profile because I think he's got the attributes for a strongly run race, as he proved as he did at um, in, in Punchestown. I think it was 25 runners that day. Um, Teddy Blue's got a huge amount of talent, but he just needs to settle a bit. He can be a little bit free and a bit almost over uh, exuberant, but if they can sort of harness his ability, he's really useful. And I said the Paul Nichols one as well uh, was very good at uh, Chepstone. Um, he clocked a decent time, but I think Jim Coco is the one I'd, I'd, I'd be um, nailing my colours to the mask with here. Okay, Jim Coco uh, and his primary selection here at 12 to 1 with the likes of Bet365, Sky Bear, and Paddy Power. Teddy Blue, 14 to 1 with William Hill and Coral. And if you like a bit of Sonagino, he's 13 to 2 for Paul Nichols. Does look an interesting renewal of Great Wood. Final race we're going to have a look on the card is the Sky Bet Supreme Trial Novices Hurdle. Uh, that's at 330, £50,000 prize fund. Again, we're going to have the final deck to this. But currently, uh, Bet for at least a price at the market with Spring World Boy. Being your 11 to 4 favourite, Iberico Lord at 7 to 2, 5 to 1 for Plains Indian, 6 to 1 Gin Coco, who probably will go for the Great Wood, as Andy has mentioned, uh, and bigger prices about Fenacross, Father Jazz, and more. Andy? Yeah, I mean, it's indicative that Plains Indian, what price do you say he was? 5 to 1, I've got here. 5 to 1. If you'd have said to me Plains Indian would be 5 to 1 to win a, a grey to a Chelham. <laughs> um, sort of like midway through last season, I would have left you out of town because I do know him very well and I've been seeing him run on numerous occasions. I think he's a likeable horse, but I don't think he's a grade two horse. And the fact that he's five to one pretty much sums up how I think weak this race is. Uh, there's a lot of horses with ones by their name, but I don't think they amount to a great deal. A lot of them have won quite impressively readily. 
but in very slow times against poor opposition. Springwell boy, who's been chalked to favour him, I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, I mean that that form of that Carl R race, I think he's you know not worth not worth the paper it's written on. So I think the most eye-catching one amongst this lot is this Ibirica Lord, uh, who obviously represents the stable and knows the time of day uh, with novices. Picked up by JP McManus, having won a um, a French bumper. Looked very impressive that day. I watched the video about this morning. I think he could be very he could be anything. Um, and he's likely to be fairly useful, but his Nicky Henderson's got hold of him. So I don't think it's going to take a great deal of winning this race. There's something with a touch of quality that we haven't yet seen, perhaps in the shape of a Birico Lord on his hurling debut, might well be good enough. But I do think that, and I can't stress it enough, how substandard that race is to normal runnings. Okay. Interesting thoughts. Altio, of course, won the race back in yeah, 20. There's no, there's no Altio in this race this year. <laughs> no. And if you like Springwell Bay, I've just watched the TV and the horse it beat last time out has just been uh, beaten at odds on. Uh, yeah. So maybe one yeah. to avoid there. But that's either. Yeah, yeah, so many horses, like I say, with Moddy's form bringing, bringing into the table there. So I, I, think, I think the betting's could be a little bit um, skewed by the, by the looks of it. Okay. Uh, is that it in terms of Sunday for you, Andy? Yeah, I've, I've had a look at the bumper. There's a nice horse that runs in the bumper called Roger Pohl, um, trained by uh, Gavin, uh, King, trained by Jamie Snowden. Of course, Gavin Sheen will ride. Um, I was quite impressed with him at Worcester. Um, Cuthbert Dibble, who finished third, he's also a nice horse. I, th I think the form of that race is quite good. The horse of, um, I think, Sir Mark Prescott, Zaninski won at the at Lingfield the other day, won the owner on, on the poly track. So that form's already taken a boost. He, he clocked a good number when he won on debut. So I think he could be quite good. Um, but um, yeah, the re rest of the card, it's one or two other ones, but uh, no, 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 nothing. Oh, back on the lash was the other one I quite looked, liked. I, d I did make a note of him. Um, won, of course, the cross-country race last year, but of course there's no cross-country race this year. So connections have had to, be, had to be a little bit more adaptable to change. And I noticed that uh, Martin Keatley gave this a spin over hurdles last time out at Worcester with a view to perhaps readying him for this uh, meeting. Um, and of course, he's owned by um, none other than Harry Redknapp. So Harry's there over the weekend. That'd be a nice runner for him. So maybe back on the lash in the, in the um, is it three mile three handicap. Yeah, three mile three handicap on the Sunday. That's at 2.20, the Juice and Handicap Chase. Back on the lash at 14 to 1. Musical Stadium, 5 to 2, current favourite for that. So just wrapping things up, Andy. Perseus Way, maybe an eye catcher to know, don't you think? Yep. The best bet is the Richard Bandy horse on Friday? Yeah, Master Dancer. Um, probably be, you know, less than 11 to 2 by the time we put this out, uh, particularly if you're looking at this maybe Friday morning. He'll be probably going up on my column. I might have to put him up as a win only, but <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to have much each way value left uh, by, the, by the time that um, my column goes out in the morning. And I have actually backed um, Perseus Way for the Triumph Hurdle. I've taken a chance. He's 50 to 1 across the board. Uh, I've backed a few horses actually for the Triumph Hurdle just based on their platform, and he's one of them. So I'll be hoping for a good start. If he runs well or is as good as I think he might turn out to be, then uh, that 50s might not be available come uh, Saturday afternoon. OK, confident selections then from Andy. Good luck to him. Of course, you can find Andy's selections on the Odds Checker website and, of course, on the Odds Checker app. Racing Weekly, do check that out with Richie and Sam. They looked ahead to the November meeting with Paul Ferguson. And once again, Gareth Southgate, by the time this has come out, will have named his squad for the World Cup for England. So check out the YouTube channel where Odds Checker will have a lot of World Cup content going out over the weekend. Thanks, as always, Andy. Enjoy all the action this weekend. Yeah, looking forward to it. It should be great fun. Can't wait. Good stuff as always from Andy and we'll be back with another Odds Checker betting show for you very, very soon. Thanks again for your company. Enjoy all the sport this weekend and hopefully you can fire in a few winners at Cheltenham. <laughs>